Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I'm back. Ready to finally do a movie review. I mean, especially now that I'm wearing my Tom and Jerry t-shirt that I got as a early Christmas gift. <laughs> That's where you can see uh, the famous uh, cat and mouse team. Tom right here. And Jerry. <laughs> um, and yes, I'm going to review their latest film, the 2021 live action CGI digital animated uh, blend hybrid. Before I get to that, let me ask you as a cartoon fan around, you know, I love watching Saturday morning cartoons, weekday afternoons, and of course, <laughs> having to watch cartoons pretty much on cable television, satellites, streaming, physical media, you name it. I grew up watching Tom and Jerry ever since I was a kid. It was on Sundays and weekday mornings and afternoons on KCOP Channel 14 in Los Angeles uh, back in the 80s and 90s. They spawned like many shorts. Um, it's created by Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera, the same team that would later um, accommodate several uh, shorts and TV shows that we got, like The Flintstones, The Jetsons, Scooby Doo, Wacky Races, and all the rest. And just to think, you know, without Tom and Jerry, we would have never had any of them. <clears throat> All of which were distributed by MGM, uh, joining in with the animation teams of Gene Deitch, Tex Avery, and Chuck Jones, uh, joining in with uh, Lou Schneider. I mean, they were so popular that they actually had a TV series to follow, you know, like the Tom and Jerry comedy show. Um, we also had Tom and Jerry Kids that aired on Fox Kids. And we even have uh, the very first uh, feature-length animated feature that came out in 92 overseas, but it came here in North America in the summer of 1993. Yeah, which that's the one where Tom and Jerry actually spoke, uh, featuring the voices of Richard Kind and Dana Hill. I mean, yes, I've seen the movie. The first half of that, and maybe perhaps the last, and maybe in the middle, those were the best scenes with the animation looking incredibly stunning, with them just chasing around as usual, because, you know, Tom just wants to eat Jerry, and Jerry just pulls a lot of practical, wacky, physical humor and slapstick. I mean, of course, it's always been that way. Especially when they're living in a local family home. I mean, there's like several stories to follow. But it was a disappointment, mostly because it just turns into a, a basically a rescuer's ripoff. We have this little girl that's being stuck by her scrumptious aunt and his and her uh, devious uh, partner which yeah she was kidnapped and then trying to wait for her explorer fodder to arrive to save her uh, with the help of Tom and Jerry yeah. and he got some supporting cast to follow mm, nothing special but we also had all the direct video movies um, ranging from good to mediocre to plain bad. But hey, <laughs> the legacy lives on. So now we finally got this uh, brand new movie. After all these years, after all these decades, and I know we've seen this before with all these live action animation hybrids. Some work, others don't. I mean, trying to become like what Who Framed Roger Rabbit uh, came to be. 
but I know it's nothing new because apparently um, Tom and Jerry has to got involved in some uh, live action uh, movies before. You know, like I think it was Anchors Away with Gene Kelly, and he was dancing with Jerry in that one scene. I thought that was really cool. And I think they both made some appearance in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I could be wrong, but I know Droopy was in there. Um, I think maybe I might be right, I don't know. So this is the first time um, in decades, and as a result, it's an atrocious disaster. I mean, you got Chloe Grace Moretz from Kick-Ass. I mean, I know she got her start in 500 Days of Summer, but she was also a promising actress with other films like Let Me In and Hugo. But then she winds up in films like the, the Tim Burton remake based on the, the series, you know, Dark Shadows, which I did enjoy. And she even did the sequel, Kick-Ass 2. But then she was in the Carrie remake, and then she was doing a lot of bad films like Hick. Um, that stupid Suspiria movie, and she has done some pretty forgettable ones, like If I Stay, you know, a, a young audience drama. I mean, either she needs to fire her agent, or she needs to pick better scripts. Because this has to be her worst performance I'm seeing coming from her, playing a very quirky, street smart a young woman, Desperately finding a job that she wants, you know, by working at a local fancy hotel. Well, Tom and Jerry eventually, you know, bumps into each other and, and all, and and that's where the trouble starts. Especially when they're getting ready to prepare for a wedding for this uh, interrelational couple. I mean, of course, you got Michael Pena as uh, her hotel manager joining in um, or partner for that matter yeah it's um, I mean you got yeah you got Michael Pena playing a scheming event manager um, which I know we have the wealthy gen general manager who's the owner of the Royal Gate Hotel you know, Henry you got uh, Chef Jackie played by Ken John pretty much doing his same old chatik that he's often doing, except he's playing an angry guy. I mean... And then you got all these other characters and... Uh, mix blending in like a, it's a laundry list. I mean, you could definitely say exactly all the predictability that's happening. I mean, yes, they're gonna put pop culture references. Uh, they're gonna put hip-hop and pop music. They're going to put a lot of of today's t technology gadgets. Uh, they're going to come up with some lame jokes. You know, that's pretty much what everyone follows. I mean, and it's not funny. And that's what I was afraid of when watching this. Especially now that, uh, while it's still playing in theaters, it also aired on the streaming service HBO Max because I know they've been putting out some Warner Bros. films uh, that were playing in theaters. Um, and now that they're being reopened again, I'm just happy that I'll be looking forward to seeing even more films that I missed in a theater. Because this pandemic is just keeps getting worse and worse every freaking month. And I'm tired of it. And I want this to stop. I want this to be over. So I don't have to waste my time watching garbage like this. Okay. I'm sorry I'm taking a little long here, but this is what I felt. So, let's get right to it. The movie stars Chloe Grace Moretz, Michael Pena, Colin Joss, Rob Delaney, Ken John, Palaberry Sharda, Jordan Bulger, Patsy Ferran, Daniel Adeg Boyega, Christina Chan, AJ uh, Chapa, 
Also, you got uh, Bill Hanna, along with Mel Blank and June Foray, using their archive uh, audio recordings. And they also got Frank Wilker to join. But then you also got some rappers like T Pain, Nicky Jam, Lil Rai Hari, Harwari, and you also got Bobby Cantavell. By joining in with all the other supporting cast, of course, I mean, yes, there's going to be Droopy, there's going to be Spike, there's going to be Goldie the Goldfish, and Toots the lower <laughs> just like how we got them in, in the whole shorts the series and there's even Scooey uh, Squirrel <laughs> it's written by Kevin Costello and he should take the blame for this for coming up with such ridiculous atrocious script and of course it's based on the cartoons by Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera and it's directed by Tim Story. Yes, the same Tim Story, who not only did the voice of the uh, the pigeon announcer, but of course he's the same man who gave us the Fantastic Four um, movies, along with um, the Barbershop films. But yes, he also had, did Taxi and the Ride Along movies, among many others. Oh boy, <laughs> this is going to be a long shot. The movie begins set in Manhattan, New York City, which opens up with some animated rapping pigeons while singing to the tune, Can I Kick It? That's what we... Because <laughs> they really sure want to open it this way. That's where we see Tom Cat, who dreams of becoming a pianist, who plays at Central Park with the entire audience, you know, already cheering on by his particular wonderful performance until his longtime rival Jerry Mouse had came just to find a special house for himself and just picks a fight with Tom which his keyboard ends up being destroyed and that's what follows the chase and that's when we bumped into a street smart quirky young woman named Kayla Forrester, played by Chloe Grace Moretz. Yeah, I mean, got bumped into Tom while chasing Cherry. Um, but looking for a position to find a new job at the fancy hotel called the Royal Gate. And Kayla is just being tasked with the helping of an event manager named Terrence Mendoza, played by Michael Pena, I guess, you know, almost trying to do his best to not get stuck with his persona in <laughs> Ant-Man movies. Yeah, of course, because you know, Michael Pena has always been in, in several films of his work, and I know he was previously in that awful fantastic uh, Fantasy Island, sorry. Um, anyway, he, he was arranging a high-profile wedding, and a very... Uh, Indian wedding for this um, interracial couple. Um, the bride is uh, Preeta, played by Palaveri Sharda, um, joining in with uh, Ben, played by Colin Joss, who's uh, the groom. And of course, they both have pets. Uh, one is um, Spike, the bulldog. Yeah, voiced by Bobby Cantavelle and Toots Galore, yeah, the fluffy white cat. Um, so at this point on, you know, Jerry takes up uh, the residence at the hotel where his regular shenanigans involve stealing food, you know, such as the cheese, and items to wrap up through his entire new lifestyle. You know, just staying in, in his hotel room. You know, just having some snacks, laying down on this comfortable bed while watching the Mel Brooks comedy classic, Young Frankenstein. And I would rather watch that than this. <laughs> on the 4K uh, big screen TV. While Tom was trying to do his best 
to go after Jerry and trying to jump all the way up into the hotel window trying to find better ways to to get there but he but he's doing all these failed attempts keep falling all the way down into the pavement and then there's even a Batman's reference where he has to end up uh, flying around once I'm going up all the way up of up, up the sky into the moon and then just land straight and just fails and then once I'm climbing and and walking to the the electrical wires until he got electrocuted and then when he finally got caught into the hotel window well Jerry just when the the whole just when the window was open Jerry eventually just closes it shuts it off and then and then next thing you know Tom just suddenly went inside and just that's what causes a a chase tornado and Kyla just spotted it <laughs> so then we realized that Preta just found some, most of her missing items from the purse including the, the engagement ring that she has so in order to stop Jerry uh, Kyla just decided to arrange uh, Tom you know, working as a hotel uh, build pop to to actually stop Jerry and you know just kick him out and that's what he did things were going according to plan but then things just seem to get much worse hoping that this is not going to be a disaster Tom was already you know being prepared for his performance uh, trying to get to know uh, Toots I know he accidentally bumped into um, the spike you know during the chase between Tom and Jerry um, I also got bumped into those alley cats uh, earlier on sort of a take on uh, the movie the warriors and of course Tom's gonna end up meeting them again yeah so things became pretty much of a disaster when uh, especially after uh, Terrence uh, well <laughs> you know he was already you know, spotting the uh, Goldie the goldfish and yes you can even see all these uh, bubble uh, which even has a an emoji icon of a poop okay and I know he was making contact here with um, with Henry because Henry of course hired uh, Kyla and, and trying to see what they can um, Terrence had to take uh, Spike for a walk and ends up um, pooping into the pedestrian sidewalk yeah and I guarantee you won't be able to see that because of how many burritos he had and well the farting and bathroom humor jokes and everything and then it only gets much worse with when Spike ends up being part of the chase with Tom and Jerry you know and then that's where they destroyed the, the ceiling of the hotel and hoping to fix this problem Kyla decided to kick uh, Tom and Jerry out and they wound up exploring the entire city of New York and riding around on the limo and you know, doing all these practical jokes and then they wound up at uh, at the local baseball field you know just watching a baseball game Tom catches uh, the ball and then winds up being sent into the pound where yes that's where we got to see uh, Droopy in a very tiny cameo dressed up like he's Hannibal Lecter with that mask from the Signs of the Lambs along with the Hannibal Lecter movies and then we see the alley cats again yeah just fretting him and telling him to eat Jerry and he tries <laughs> um, afterwards Terrence, uh, who just got fired from his job, wants up uh, forming a plan to communicate with Tom and Jerry to bump into um, the entire um, wedding ceremony. You know where they brought in the the elephants, the peacocks, and all the rest of the guests along. You know, we're raging for this particular moment until 
it just got worse with Tom and Jerry chasing around with Spike and the elephants got scared I mean they even got a tiger too and so this is like a huge chase so now Kyla spills the beans and Terrence actually threw Tom out and Jerry just got out of there so that yes she takes the blame for all of this um, she realized that she actually stole the resume from this uh, woman that she just met earlier yeah, trying to con her way out and now she got fired so they figured another plan was maybe to rearrange all of this from that happening again uh, Tom and Jerry former plan um, with the help of Kayla and her friend to see if they could finally get it right and they did and it turned out to be good for the best I mean even though both Ben and Preeta were not quite connecting with each other I mean Ben was pretty much a techno freak Preeta just wants to have pretty much all the love that she can get from her fiance and hoping that they'll connect with each other and that's exactly what we have well, until the movie ends <sighs> when Tom and Jerry were on screen I did laugh they were probably the best moments I could definitely take the animation style of Tom and Jerry as well as the other characters uh, were quite good I'll give you that I mean, not exactly as fresh as the previous ones, but it was getting there. I mean, it kind of looks pretty much like your standard uh, today's cartoons, where every animation next to nothing isn't quite uh, spectacular. Even though they're pretty much stuck in a very awful and very dull boring, uninteresting, live-action, uh, romantic comedy that we've seen so many times already. I mean, it's almost like I'm watching a, a very bad uh, comedy blending in with animation. And it doesn't work that way. I mean, Chloe Grace Verretz, again, takes the worst performance I've seen since Hick. Uh, Michael Pena, I mean, why was he there? Because just for his comic timing of him just, you know, getting involved with all the the, the wrecked havoc, or all the wretch havoc that's happening, and his timing just seems particularly off. A Ken Jaw just playing the your typical stereotype uh, angry ship. I'm getting tired of that already. Then you got this uh, character named Joy, who's very awkward, always going around scaring when she appears. Uh, yeah, Patsy Ferran. I mean, this Bill girl just uh, just gets on my nerves after a while. Um, I can't stand those rapping the pigeons. I'm tired of all this hip-hop songs. I'm getting sick and tired of all these pop culture references that are incredibly lame. All these stupid jokes. Yeah, involving, you know, millennials can be so smart or any other time. I'm tired of hearing that, that catchphrase and, and all that shit and all that crap. Um... The rest of the characters are just dull, boring, uninteresting, nothing special. I mean, I just don't want to see this. I just want to see Tom and Jerry, you know, doing all their racky hijinks. I mean, at least they didn't speak, that's for sure. I mean, they try to do their best to communicate. I mean, at least that's what they're trying to do. You know, I like to see both of them hanging around and once in a while, you know, as friends. There's nothing wrong with that. I like to see more of the other 
characters that were actually worth seeing, but that's but nothing like this. Oi. I mean this this might as well just be one of the worst movies I've seen this year alone for 2021 and I know we're already three months ahead it's already April now <laughs> since it just came out uh, a month and a half ago and this is the first time I'm seeing this I would rather just watch um, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'd rather watch the 1992 animated feature over this. As bad as it was, at least, you know, I can handle a short subject without Tom and Jerry speaking. But when they do spoke, well, <laughs> it's a whole different movie. But I really didn't care for that one either, so I still wouldn't. Um, but I would rather just stick to the shorts, which are so much better. I mean, you can watch them on Boomerang. I mean, they were on Cartoon Network, too. Uh, you can even uh, buy the all the, the shorts and movies, the direct-to-video movies, too, on physical media. You know, DVDs, Blu-rays, you name it. You can even watch it on MeTV. You know, they're now playing Saturday morning cartoons, as well as uh, weekday mornings. I mean, anything but this. I mean, HBO Max probably already has all the shorts on there. If I want to see another live-action animated film that's set in New York City, I would rather watch Enchanted, which is one of my favorite movies that features Amy Adams, you know, who actually played a princess living in an animated fairy tale like all the other Disney films we got. And wants up going to a fish out of water tale into New York City after she got pushed into a well by this old hag. Which, by the way, the animated uh, or the live action the features uh, was actually done by makeup artist Rick Baker uh, for Susan Sarandon. Over this. Hell, I would rather watch The Smurfs along with its sequel. It has its issues, but it does have its heart in, in the right place and soul. This has none of that in this film. I mean, it's hard to believe that we come to this after last year's Sonic the Hedgehog, where it had a controversial animated uh, design for Sonic. They finally got it right. And the story, well, sometimes it could be cliche and all, it's still a very fun movie. And why can't Tom and Jerry be like that? I just don't understand. I mean, luckily for that movie, it became successful. And they're ready for another sequel. And that's another thing, too. The film also got success at the box office uh, for this movie. Uh, for a $79 million budget, it only made like over $86 million. And that's a loan for HBO Max, and some feeders are playing it. And they're still playing in feeders, despite of now being reopened already. You know, since we've been long going with this pandemic, and already people are getting their vaccines. Yeah. It's just atrociously awful. So that's Tom and Jerry, the 2021 live action CGI digital animation hybrid, and I give the film zero stars. I'm sorry, it's just too much. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later. Bye.